Hey everybody, welcome back. So today uh, I need to work on the Jetta so that I can roll it back so that I can get the rabbit outside so that I can paint it in the driveway because I don't want overspray in the garage. So it uh, probably looks a little bit different than the last time you guys saw it is because I've been kind of working on it a little piecemeal here and there and I haven't really been filming it. But everything's back together. I need to do a quick oil change and um, put a battery in it and I'm going to see if it starts. So I've got about an hour or so to work today before I have to get ready for work tonight. And uh, so I figured I'd come out here, do a quick oil change, throw a battery in it, and cross my fingers and see if it starts. I'm only going to run it for just long enough to see if it runs smoothly because um, I'm not going to put coolant in it and all that stuff because I need to flush the lines uh, before I fill it with fresh G12 which is the pink coolant which is supposed to be in this car. So that's the plan for today and I'm going to get to work. I'm going to put in a new pollen filter since I'm literally right here. And it needs to be changed anyway. It's pretty gross. So I have a few more things to button up underneath here. I need to like, kind of get these this power steering line kind of held back up out of the way, which is pretty simple with a few few wire ties. Um, but I think everything else is pretty much wrapped up. I may need to replace this passenger side uh, drive axle. I'm not sure. Um, it uh, sounded a little clunky when I when I was working on it. It might have been from the boot being torn and damaging the uh, damaging the joint itself, but I'm just not sure. So I'll know once I take it for a test drive, which I don't have time to do today, but uh, we'll know soon enough. If you're going to use a funnel, it's always a good idea to give it a quick clean because you never know what's hanging out in it. Just give it a quick wipe down before you use it, especially when it's been laying around a dirty shop for a while. It's just a little extra peace of mind so I don't spill oil everywhere when I do this. It's nice to think I'd dump it straight in, but not likely. Especially like that, that would have went everywhere. Put 
putting in four and a half quarts. oil on the okay before I hook up the negative I'm gonna have the key on hand because sometimes the alarms on these freak out and it'll scare the crap out of me No annoying alarm. I know I still got to put the battery box in here and the clamp and all that kind of stuff, but we're just going to try to run it on the jack stands for now just to see if it, it will start. So let's give this a shot. That right there is the absolutely, that right there is the most stressful part of any engine swap is when you hit the key for the first time. And it fired off perfect. Like, went into high idle, set into regular idle, ran perfect. I am extremely happy with that. So the last thing to do on this is gonna be just button up all of the accessories um, do it and then we start detailing we got to get this thing clean we can't sell it dirty it looks terrible right now the other thing that we need to do is we need to get some tires now these front ones have marginal tread they've probably got 50% remaining the rear ones I'll give you guys a little lesson on tires here real quick so if you look at the tire let's spread this tripod out so you can see so you can see it's got decent tread still in the middle and the sides are smooth. That is caused by underinflation. So likewise, if the center of the tire is worn out and the sides are still good, that means the tire was overinflated for most of its life. So I'm gonna find a used set of tires for the rear and we're gonna get some detailing done get the front bumper put on uh, get this thing back on the ground I'm actually a little bit ahead of schedule so I think I'm gonna go ahead and while I have the camera out and while I have a couple of minutes I'm gonna grab my tools I'm gonna throw the front bumper on throw the grill on make this look like a complete car get it on the ground so let's do it so one of the nice things about working on a station wagon is you have a place to store parts Time to grab the bumper out of the hatch. <laughs> of course it wants to be stubborn. And of course, I'm using my officially licensed Nathan's Garage Workbench. <laughs> that just cracks me up for some reason, I don't know why. So. Broke one of these, 
taken it off last time. So I picked up a new one from the junkyard, or a used one. All right, so one more problem I need to figure out. And that is, I don't know if you can hear it, but the coolant after run pump is going continuously. So I don't know if that is a relay issue, but right now the engine's cold. There's no reason for the coolant after run pump to go. It's been going for about five minutes now. So uh, we need to do a little homework on that and figure out if there's a relay or something like that needs to be replaced. Uh, I just don't know. I've got to look it up. So, um, but everything else, um, I've got a couple of hose clamps to put on and stuff like that. Um, but everything else worked as intended. So I'm super excited about that. Um, the rest of this Jetta episode is going to be detailing, polishing, cleanup, and uh, that kind of stuff. So, uh, and then we've got, you know, we've got like uh, uh, the covers to put on in the back of the engine compartment here. I'm not going to bore you guys with videoing all that stuff. So, um, I'm going to leave the grill out until I clean up this area where the grill snaps in, and uh, we'll get the engine compartment cleaned up and uh, get this thing ready to go. So, but the hardest part of the swap or the whole project is done, is getting this motor in, making sure it runs. Um, you know, whenever you do timing belt stuff, it's always like, oh, you're always like, like super worried about if the timing, you know, if you got it all, even though you'd like put the timing belt on, followed the instructions, turned it over like by hand with a wrench, uh, two full revolutions, make sure nothing's contacting. It's still, you're always like, like hit that key and you're like, oh, God, please don't be wrong. And in, in this situation, I was right. Um, so, uh, plus we undid a lot of wires and hoses and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's always nice to be able to get that reassurance that when you hit the key, everything's hooked up correctly. So, um, so we'll get the coolant flushed, we'll get it detailed, and we'll get uh, all the little bits and bobs and and loose ends tied up and we're gonna get this thing ready to sell to sell and let's make some money because it's time